So hey everyone, I've got a, another thing to show you here. This is an old Kodak camera. So you can kind of see there. It's a sort of uh, bellows rangefinder uh, camera. I don't actually remember exactly where I got this from, but it's been kicking around for quite a long time. And um, it's, it's quite interesting. It's in pretty good condition. Um, and it's interesting because the film it takes, so here's the film. I'm not going to actually put the film in because I don't want to uh, do that under such bright light, but it takes what used to be called 620 film, which looks pretty much the same as 120 film, uh, but it's actually slightly narrower uh, on, the, on this part here. So if you put a 120 in here, it would jam, but, uh, but if uh, you can still get 620 film, uh, it's pretty hard to get hold of but you can still do it um, to, to use in these cameras. And I've actually never put a film through this camera, so I'm quite interested to see what will happen actually. So I'll show you the camera a little bit. So just open it up first, so you can see inside. So something to remember if you ever do buy a camera like this is to, to have a quite a close look inside, to see what kind of condition it's in. Um, and this one's actually not too bad. The, the light ceiling looks like it might be okay, so it probably won't let in uh, too much light. You can see the date it was manufactured, 1957. Uh, this is the window, so that's how you know what uh, exposure you're on, because a little number will, will show up there as you wind it through. So the film goes in there, and then you pull it through into this other spool on the opposite side. So this spool also has to be a 620 spool. And that, you know, like I said, that's a bit smaller than a 120 and they're usually metal, but you can get them off eBay quite readily. And this just flips out, if I move that out of the way. Flips out and you can take the film out, put an empty spool in, put it back in and then just load the film pretty much the same way as you would a 120 film. So the other thing to, I'll just close that a little bit and release the bellows, so that's the bellows, lenses at the front. If you do actually ever want, want to buy one of these, the thing to look at quite carefully is the condition of the bellows, because you obviously where these creases are, you could get um, light leaks. But these look okay, so you can put, one way you can do this is by looking through the back and shining a torch around the bellows and seeing if any light comes through. And in this case, it didn't, didn't seem to be the case that there were any leaks. So how do these things work? Well, pretty old school. So you, you just pull this out to uh, when it clips in. There you go, it's clipped in. You can tell that it's uh, fully extended. This is the viewfinder. So you look down there and you see a little picture out the front. Your lens, so on the side here, you've got your aperture. This goes from F. 4.5 to f32 and um, always check that the aperture works as well when you you can look through here's your shutter release so you can hear the shutter go there um, shutter speed is set by this dial here so you just rotate it there is a bulb setting where it stays open so I'm just move it to uh, maybe one more so now it stays open until you let go. So that's a way you can look through to see what the aperture looks like, and check that the blades are moving. Um, to focus, you, you turn the front of this lens and there's some focus points marked on it. So it's very much a kind of guesstimate on the focusing point of view. Uh, so it tends to be a good idea if you can to use a slightly higher aperture. The snag with that is a lot of these films tend to be low ISO, so this is 25, uh, so that's not going to be uh, conducive to really um, small apertures and high shutter speeds obviously, so uh, anything that's moving might end up quite blurry, and if it's a person you have to get them to stand there as still as possible. The other thing it has is a timer, so uh, if I put this back to the shutter speed, um, pull that up and then it has a, a, a clockwork shutter release which would in theory give you enough time to run 
to get into the picture. Um, any second now I'll go off. Quite often these don't work anymore. So I've got another camera that I might make a film of sometime where this tends to, to stick um, and you have to poke it to get it going again. So that's a common problem with these that the clockwork stuff doesn't work too well. When you look at them, try and make sure the shutter actually works. So listen for it changing speed. So I've got it on 125th. So that sounded roughly okay. And then 150th sounded a bit quicker. And then you can hear it going quicker and quicker. Uh, that's bulb, so there's no point in that one. Uh, so that's sort of it really. There's a kind of quick rough and ready framer at the back there as well. If you want to just say if you were doing kind of like an action shot or something like that, you wouldn't want to be looking through the funny little thing at the front. So you'd frame it like that. Or, you know, both of these are quite approximate in terms of framing your picture, so it doesn't really matter if you, if you use one or the other. It's not a bad looking camera actually, I quite like this detailing on the bottom, of the stripes um, on the top as well. And the size of the picture you get is actually, the, the front door is an indicator of that. Just turn that to put it away. So I'll show you the size of the negative. So the size of the negative is roughly the size of this inside bit here. So it's um, probably six by seven centimeters, something like that. So it's quite an interesting format as well. Um, so yeah, interesting little camera. Um, uh, it'd be interesting to see if it actually works. So once I've taken some pictures with it and developed them, I'll maybe show them. Um, there's your wind on to wind your film on. Yeah, so quite interesting. See if it works. Okay, thanks for watching.